Hey, good morning everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's July 2nd and it's about 7.20 a.m. here on the east coast of the United States. Prices of BTC are currently at 9700 and some change. So let's see what's happening in the uh, analysis here, guys. Uh, again, yesterday I did mention that um, you know prices were looking a little bit shaky. I was sort of tired of making excuses for BTC to hold each level. Um, really, the level that should have held uh, was this area right here, where I drew this marker around eleven thousand one hundred and fifty dollars, because th this is technically where this candle bounced and closed, and then the falling opened. Uh, and close right up here. And after that, when we saw this one and then this one break past this, um, I think I knew for the most part that things are going to look a little shaky, but uh, another thing that I was looking at was um, the 21 EMA, which was you know right around this 10,300 area. Um, and I was hoping that that would bounce, and I kept saying over and over again in the uh, Discord channel that we have right here, you know, if BTC finds support here above 10,300 on the daily closing, I think tomorrow we may see a strong bullish candle. Um, and obviously my reasoning for that was the fact that the 21 EMA was right around that 10,300 marker and the 21 EMA on the daily chart has been incredibly supportive, you know, over here since February, support, support. Uh, once we broke through in April with support, even over here in May, it was support. Once we broke down over here, passed it in June, we then found the 30 EMA, okay? And that one is currently right at the marker of $9,800 or so, okay? So all of these look like, you know, they found support either on the 21 EMA or the 30 EMA. So this is a very critical area for BTC to be in. And uh, be able to find support. Okay. Um, so anyway, I did mention that, and uh, we closed out of a lot, uh, out of a lot of positions. And I was hoping that prices would bounce, but for the most part, they did not. Um, so we positioned ourselves well with risk management, and were able to avoid this more recent dump. Okay. Um, so with that being said. You know, a couple of the different landing spots that we have for BTC, um, one of which is, I'm gonna turn off this EMA and this one, um, one of which is right around this red box, okay? This is really where we had previous consolidation uh, from 15th of June all the way to the 20th, 20th of June, five days of sideways movement. Typically, a consolidation is um, where prices um, more often than not bounce or at least hold because there's a lot of area. This is basically a lot of, you know, buyers consuming a lot of asset. Uh, and then eventually when they do, the demand, you know, sort of pushes the prices up. And then another consolidation area happens where um, there's a lot of sellers waiting and then the buyers again consume everything and then prices push so you could see in this region right here prices you know held for a little bit right because this was really the sideways consolidation level um, right in this region right here okay you can see prices held in that region but then eventually broke through so that means that these people who were essentially holding and defending their positions right here are now underwater or they also sold with this recent dump okay so now that brings the next level of consolidation, which is you know the um, mid nine thousands right here, to the uh, nine thousand flat range right there. This also coordinates with the high volume uh, node right here on the volume profile. Okay, um, you know so that kind of brings the markers out to about ninety four hundred all the way down to about ninety one hundred or nine thousand. Okay, so if prices do come down, I would expect at the very least a little bounce right here, uh, and then you know maybe potential rise back up uh, toward I don't know maybe ten thousand, maybe even you know at, as high as like ten thousand five hundred. I also stated yesterday that uh, you know at ten thousand five hundred or so, if we start seeing rejections right there. 
um, that might be really the area where things are going to get a little shaky, okay? Uh, let's see, where did I say that? Okay, I said, but on the flip side, we have resistance meeting us currently at 10,500 or 10,600. Um, shown on the four hour chart. If the price hits this resistance and cannot climb over it, then I'd say we're destined for the 9400 marker. Okay, everything is noted right here, guys. All this information is given to my Advantage members every single day. Okay, um, technicals don't have to be hard. You just have to be you know, willing to look for the right things rather than sort of put your emotional bias in and hope and pray. Okay, so this is why we knew that for the most part, price needs to show a climb of strength above this area. Um, and if it did not, then it looks like we're going to go down. And that's kind of exactly what happened. In you know, really a sea of red candles, this is really the only green candles that we saw. Got rejected right around 10,600. And then boom, it's headed down to this level. Okay. Um, I mean, I really don't see anything else in the way that's holding us here. Um, so I would probably say we're going to 9,400, uh, but I guess you could make the argument that, you know, uh, the, the 30 um, EMA right now and the 21 EMA could be supporting price as well because that is another marker that uh, has been so supportive for the past few months. So uh, I guess I could keep an eye on that as well, okay? Now, even over here, um, you know, we did say that uh, we were in the ABC uh, flat wave correction. This was over here, and I was hoping that this would be the end of the C wave, and this would be a, a regular flat, meaning that, you know, when the A bounces down, typically the zigzags are A right here, B like this, and then C typically goes deeper than this A right here, okay? And the flat wave corrections typically what happens is you have an A like this, a B right here, and then a C that comes back to the same level, okay, as the A, right? Um, and then sometimes you have extended flats, which are, you know, A like this, B goes a little bit higher than the A, and then C comes um, higher low as the A. So there's all kinds of ABC corrections, guys. It really just depends on the different strengths and environment around the market. Typically, you have the extent, extended flats or regular flats when things are extremely bullish, right? Um, because, you know, if A is coming down like this, B tries to reach back higher than A, and then the C is a higher low of that A. This ultimately, you know, speaks on the... Um, uh, on the side of the fact that bullish strength is very strong, even in a corrective wave, okay? All right, so um, with that being said, you know, now that we're in this A, B, C correction, okay, because I don't really know how else to see it, um, this has to be an A, B, C correction, okay? So this is the A right here, this is the big B, and this is really the big C right there. Okay, typically the C is um, 50 to 61.8 percent of the previous uh, five wave impulse move. Okay, so if we go back on this, all right, let me see if I can pull up a chart that illustrates that. I don't know why this is so uh, zoomed in, something is weird. Okay. Let me sort of zoom out on this. Okay, so if we're looking at this chart right here, okay, and uh, this bottom right here was put in way around, you know, uh, $7,600 or so, all right? So I'm gonna make this five wave impulse first. Okay, so from here, this is your one, this is your two, this is your three, this is your four, somewhere right here, and this is your five, okay? Now remember, I had stated that, where did it go, okay? So C stretches down, right? All right, so check this out, okay? So now that we have that five wave impulse right there, so I'm gonna draw a fib from this bottom to this top, okay? 
Now look where the 628 meets price right now, okay? Right around that same marker, $9,900 or so, okay? Uh, if it stretches deeper, I mean, the only real fib is, you know, right around the 76 level, which would then break past even the one or two wave um, impulse count, okay? So typically you have an A that stretches like this, the B right there, and the C typically ends right around the 618 fib, okay? So this is where things are getting really interesting for BTC, and this is why I said that, you know, there's something uh, really spooky happening in the market where there's a lot of uh, selling happening, and the this chart right here, when it had such a steep angle of selling as well as, you know, not even um, a sideways consolidation, just a fast sell-off, uh, this is where things got really scary, okay? So when things got, you know, scary like this, um, it's best, in my opinion, to get out of the positions, wait in cash, let the price show you uh, what it's going to do. And that's essentially what we did, okay? Um, so with that being said, you know, with the 6.8 FIB lines up right around the C wave, uh, right around $9,900 or so. So I would hope that price bounces around here. If not, really the big you know red marker, like I stated earlier, is around 9,400 to 9,000, um, which is the previous consolidation area right here. Okay, and that hopefully you know really is the end because if it breaks past that, I mean, there's really nothing in the way until like maybe 8,200, um, and then all the way down to about you know that 70. Six seventy seven hundred dollar marker where we bounced off over here, okay. So a lot of uh, scary price action happening right now. Um, so do be careful. Set your stops. Um, our community. I I mentioned that I'm going to be one hundred percent in cash right here um, this morning. Um, took a few small losses, but luckily came out in profit yesterday on bat. So that kind of covered my big loss from um, BTC. So overall, folks, you know, um, yeah, there's there's times in the market where things look shaky, uh, and it's best to remain in cash. And in my opinion, uh, you know, this is the time to do that. Um, not investment advice, but you know, you can make your own decision. Okay. So other than that, you know, prices could fall also to the bottom of this area, this channel right here, uh, and that's around eighty four hundred dollars or so if prices just fell straight on through. Okay, this, so this part is also really interesting too because um, this is really where we found big daily support too uh, in this big flag right here, right? Found support right there, support right there, and now if we fall straight down, that marker could bring us down to about eighty-four to eighty-three hundred dollars. Okay, and surprisingly enough, okay, um, this is where things get a little interesting. All right. Remember I just said 84 to $8,300 is where this would land, right? Well, if we look at the CME gaps, that's really the most, you know, lowest unfilled gap that we see, okay? Right around the low of about $8,500. So it would be really interesting if we fill all these gaps on the way down over the coming few days um, and then break back up because I did say that these gaps have been unfilled, um, and it's not necessary that ne they need to be filled, but more often than not, I mean, if we look back on the history of BTC, you know, every single gap has been filled. This one, this one, this one, uh, this one, even this one, even this one right there. So I, I just think it's really interesting that, you know, CME gaps like this, um, are getting filled because that ultimately speaks on the behalf of um, how involved the CME is in a market like this. Because you know, if you go back on my explanations on my previous videos of how gaps work uh, and their reasoning um, for existing, uh, I think you know it just goes to show that there are some big players in the market that help move the market and bend it to their will to be able to cover. Um, losses in position or you know push the market up for profit so just just something to keep in mind folks all right so with that being said you know i think uh you know we're on a very peculiar spot 
where I could see now that this gap is filled, the next really remaining gap is right around, you know, $8,500 or so. So keep that in mind, folks. All right, other than that, um, I did have this uh, crypto fear and greed index, and this is something that I look forward to quite a bit too. Uh, one of the main reasons why uh, majority of our community sold right at this top right here was not only because of you know um, this fear and greed index, but also because we understood that technicals were saying that we were way too overextended to the upside, and then even on the um, on the big weekly chart that we were showing, right over here, and there was a uh, lot of resistance, you know, that had met us um, way back here around thirteen thousand in um, in two thousand eighteen bear market, uh, or rather, this was previous support. So I would figure that this was going to be new resistance as well. Okay, so it's of no surprise that you know that sort of came to play um, right around 13,000 or you know close to 14,000 so that was another reason for us to get out okay um, you know with that being said if if you kind of are stuck in your positions um, I would probably start looking to you know at least consider the idea that you may want to get out of your positions because the market could bleed a little bit further Again, not investment advice, just hoping that you guys make the right decisions um, with whatever you're doing, uh, at least in our community, folks. You know, if we can't, um, you know, give you the best trades that yield you the best results, um, at least, you know, we'll provide you uh, trades that can help you save money or, you know, whether you're in a trade, try to make sure that you don't lose as much, you know, money. Okay. Um, that's the best we can do with our non-investment advice. Uh, unfortunately, we are bound to the laws of the United States um, because we operate out of there. But, you know, we can still find wiggle room in the laws because um, we're not giving you financial advice. We're giving you the best information possible to make sure you make your own decisions. Okay. So anyway, folks, um, things are looking a little shaky. I have returned to 100% cash. Um, the weekly support is really, I would probably say... Um, at the very least around you know 82 8300 uh, technically it could bounce off this area right here too which is around ninety six hundred dollars or so um, so we have about four or five more days in the weekly so you know this is a very bearish weekly candle already um, you know so things are looking a little shaky all right um, let's check out how ether is doing Ether has probably dug back into its previous area of, um, you know, critical support that it was consolidating in. Yeah, so I would say that Ether is essentially very close to this, you know, marker, which is right around 265 all the way to 270. Um, you know, it was resistance right here, resistance, resistance. So all of this is coming very close for Ether. Uh, and if it sort of breaks past this level, um, you know, it's going to go to the bottom of this area right here, which is around, you know, $230 or 240 or so. Okay. Um, so prices are going to accelerate down fast if Ether starts cracking 260. Something to keep in mind. Okay. See how LTC is doing. Um, LTC has begun its descent to the, you know, bottom of this um, channel right here, the middle channel right here. Um, I would say LTC can land somewhere around $100 to 104, 105. Um, so keep those markers in mind for LTC as well. Let's check out how EOS is doing. Yeah, EOS is pretty much broken. Uh, most of the critical markers right here. It's barely hanging on to its support. Um, other than that, I mean, I would probably say EOS is also destined for this block right here, anywhere between 550 and down to about 530. Okay, so if you're looking for markers there, you can keep those in mind too. All right, folks, so we've sort of covered a lot. You know, went over the ABC correction, the gaps that are unfilled, went over a couple of alts. Um, even over here, you can see every single 
alt is pretty much you know grinding down with BTC and things do look a little bit more bleak right now um, I did talk about uh, BTC dominance yesterday versus uh, others which is the others dominance like the altcoin dominance um, I'll go over this in the advantage member later today so again guys if you want to join advantage um, you can do so by going to the website or uh, if you buy the $10 course that we have on Advantage, um, right there, okay, if you go to www.cryptosomniac right here, go to products and only 10 bucks right here, I will give you one free week of Advantage membership if you buy this course, okay? So keep this in mind, just message me when you're in, um, I'm right there, um, make sure I, it shows that I'm an admin, and um, yeah, folks. Just message me and um, we can then uh, talk and get you an advantage. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, take care of your positions, folks. Um, be careful in this market. It is very shaky. And I hope you set your stops tight. All right. Take care. Bye.